This is Bill Hader. This is Tom Cruise. And this is a deep fake. Some other supporting guys. And then, uh, and then Tom Cruise walks oh in. My God. Deep fakes are the next generation of video and, and audio manipulation. Like, oh, uh... And often, they look like this. Swapping someone's face onto someone else's. I love your work. Welcome back to another Cyber Awareness Moment. Today, we're going to be covering the light side of deepfakes on this amazing playlist. If you have not watched all the videos, please make sure to watch all the videos which are just appearing up here. And uh, please make sure to give us a like, give us a comment, and uh, subscribe so that you can get to know everything there is to know about cyber awareness. Today, once again, we're starting with a new uh, point of view of deep face because we have been talking about all the negative things but you know there's also some positive things and i think it's also uh, very interesting frank you were mentioning uh, recently that there was actually a video from president uh, kennedy imagine i mean that was in the 1960s so what happened so november 1963 uh, unfortunately we lost john f kennedy to an assassin's bullet and he was in Dallas, and it was prior to his speech. But what they've done is they've gone in with deep fake audio, and they actually have recreated, I, I believe the speech is like 23 or 24 minutes. It's an incredible speech. It's a, to hear it, you know, 50 years later, because um, I still remember where I was the day that we heard the news that John F. Kennedy got shot. So uh, we're going to play that for you now, guys, just a little clip of it. So you can see that deep fake can also be audio. So watch. In a world of complex and continuing problems, in a world full of frustrations and irritations, America's leadership must be guided by the lights of learning and reason, or else those who confuse rhetoric with reality and the plausible with the possible will gain the popular ascendance with their seemingly swift and simple solutions to every world problem. There will always be dissident voices heard in the land expressing opposition without alternatives, finding fault but never favor, perceiving little on every side, and seeking influence without responsibility. That's really amazing. I mean, just think about all the different things that we're going to start seeing. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if we suddenly see Elvis Presley and we suddenly start seeing all these amazing stars that are not with us anymore that suddenly are going to have a comeback. So I think that's just quite interesting. In fact, let me just show you the next video, which is from the uh, Salvador Dali Museum, which I think it's also right now in Florida, where we have the genius, which, interesting enough, they didn't really have video. So you can see that by using images and by using audio, they can actually manipulate them. And actually, this is something that they are having on the museum itself. Have a look. I have a long-standing relationship with death. Almost 30 years. I in life always believe the desire to survive and the fear of death were artistic sentiments. I understand that better now. But there is one thing that makes me different. I do not believe in my death. Do you? And folks, I want to remind you that Salvador actually passed in 1989. But here we are, you know, a whole new generation gets to not just see his creative genius in the artwork, but can hear him talk about it. So we want to talk about... Uh, Public service announcements going to a whole new level, Ernesto. Uh, David Beckham, one of the world famous soccer players, is now trying to stamp out malaria. And you're going to see a video here. It's a short video. So I want to watch it. Then I want to comment at the end. But it's in nine different languages. 
to try to help stamp out malaria. Watch this video. Malaria isn't just any disease. It's the deadliest disease there's ever been. Se dice que ha matado más de la mitad de la población que ha existido. Billion million tan murit kwe. Wa ma zala taqtul tiflan kull daqiqatayn. Mais nous pouvons y mettre fin. Nous savons comment, nous en avons la possibilité. Isn't that incredible, folks? This Beckham nine languages. Now some of you are saying, but it was somebody else's voice. It was, but if you watch closely, hit the replay, what you're going to see is that even though David was speaking in nine different languages, his lips were matching the different languages in the dialects. So deep fake has really come a long way. And it's going to come even further. Ernesto, Reuters news agency is working with a startup AI company to develop news reports by having a lot of news reports already clipped, already filed, but through artificial intelligence and deep fake, they're going to actually start sending us the kind of news reports that are most interesting to us, the kind of things that we want to watch. We already know that, that big tech knows everything we shop and every place we go and everything we do. They use an artificial intelligence and machine learning. But now the news companies, Reuters is the first one, wants to deliver us the information that we want to digest. So there are many, many more things we're going to bring to you folks about the positive aspects of deep fake and the negative aspects. So Ernesto? That just makes me think that uh, this is going to become an emerging legal nightmare. Yes. And um, for that, I would like to bring this short video from Ian Corsin, which is the uh, legal expert on anything of the Internet, to let us find out what's going on in the legal aspect. I'm Ian Corzine, your social media lawyer. Can't say YouTube lawyer anymore because Google had a little problem with it. But in this video, we're going to unpack what a deep fake is, and I'm going to show you how we're all going to be affected in the near future by this emerging new legal nightmare. There's a real concern that deep fakers out there will be hired to be able to manipulate public opinion with respect to politicians, celebrities, or other public figures, and be able to show them doing things that they didn't really do, portray them in a false light. What are the legal implications of deep fake technology? My first thought was copyright infringement. Fair use? Is that their defense? That's what I thought also, is that if there was a defense to this copyright infringement claim by the deep fakers, they would say it's fair use. I'm using someone else's art albeit without their permission to be able to make my own art. My second thought was defamation. If you were Nancy Pelosi and you were portrayed as being drunk on camera, giving speeches, slurring words, that would definitely hurt your reputation. Potentially, it would affect your ability to get reelected. My other thought was the right of publicity. And you know from watching the videos, the right of publicity is your right to control your image for commercial purposes. I also had the thought about who do you sue? If you're harmed by a deep fake video, who do you sue? Well. Obviously you sue the deep faker, but a lot of times the deep faker is not gonna have the money to be able to pay you back for the reputation harm that was caused. These deep fake videos will cause people to mistrust not only social media platforms, but the people depicted in the videos themselves. It will cause people to make bad decisions based on misinformation. So there you go. You now see that there's many, many positive aspects of using the artificial intelligence and the deep fake and how it can enhance our lives, but we still have to be ever vigilant, ever vigilant about the negative and the malicious side of it. Ernesto? I think it's great that you guys have been following the series. We still have one more video. And uh, if you would like to get some more information for yourself or for your organization, keep on watching the videos on this channel. Or if you would like a training in uh, everything about cyber awareness or cyber identity theft, please make sure to give us a call and we will be happy to provide for you free training, whether it is online or with this, it is uh, in person. And uh, you can just contact us at the telephone, which is appearing right now underneath the screen. Please make sure to go watch the last video on this series, which is just appearing right up here or up here somewhere. <laughs> That's there. If you like what you're seeing, 
Just wait till what's coming next.